Shalom, Shalom. First thing and foremost, I'm going to give all praises and glory and honor that is due to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakakwadash. I want to give double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone and Ruel. Peace and blessings and salutations to the hopeful elect. In the words of the gospel, brother, I'm the standard of Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, wherever it may be. Man, hey, they ready to move in on you, Jakes, man. Okay, this devil is ready to move in on you niggas. And quite frankly, it's really the anger of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai that's going to be bestowed on this new or this current or this coming administration, known as the Trump administration, um, <clears throat> to, to put you jigs down, man. Because I remember last week, I had a vision of them bringing back concentration camps, man. And from what I saw and what I could remember, it was nothing but jigs in these detention centers, meaning these work camps. As um, you have this guy, and this is who I was talking about, Tom Holman. This is basically the, the border czar. And he basically told you, migrants, straightforward, like, we going to declare war on you. I remember I was watching an interview, and I believe it is in part of, I believe it is. This may have been a video I was looking at. He was like, well, is there a way we could do this without separating from the families? And you got to understand, CNN, they're very subtle. Because they don't give a damn about you, Jakes, either. But he was like, yeah, we just deport them all. <laughs> Men, women, and children. <laughs> okay. But yeah, man, they about had it with you niggas, man. They feel like you're useless eaters and you know enough is enough. So, hey, man, this current administration, well, whether I keep saying the current administration, but this new Trump administration, hey, it's a good possibility that they can be the ones that fulfill Revelation 12 and 12 when this man just go absolutely batshit crazy and kill everything in sight, including his people, because not only are our people going to suffer, Lower level Edomites are going to suffer from this man too Because, you know, Esau has something What he call collateral damage When he would destroy a whole city Just to get one individual Okay, so uh, I got four videos I'm going to play and I'm going to interject In between them and, you know, kind of speak on it And I got a few precepts lined up But basically The consensus of the lesson is that they're getting ready to come down With great wrath And we know at the beginning of these administrations You have a change of government and shit just be all out of whack, man. And by us entering a new year, 2025, a hey, 2025 is going to be a very, very uh, wild year, to say the least. Because 2024, hey, I'm surprised the, the Lord didn't come back this year. As, as much shit that didn't happen. But we know that prophecy has to be fulfilled. And, you know, certain things have to come to pass before Yahweh Shah can actually come back and deliver us. And we pray that this current administration is the one that introduces this uh this MOTB system to, to get the ball rolling so we can finally get the hell up out of here. But it's not going to come without its trials, to say the least. But um, anyway, I'm going to play this video here. Uh, it goes into FEMA camps and 501c3 pastors, which a lot of these pastors are actually set up through the government agencies to mislead people. And we even mentioned that a lot of these churches and a lot of these particular stands will be used as FEMA camps, man. You know, hey, 501c3, right? Nate. And when I think of that, I think of this guy by the name of, they used to call him Nathaniel Seven, Nate Satan, or we call him uh, Bishop Nate or General Nate, whatever his title is. But, you know, Nate being pretty much one of the biggest Israelite camps out there in America, I mean, he's clearly on the 501c3. And me personally, I believe them niggas are the feds, man, you know, to say the least. So, hey, brothers, just be careful. You know, just just be careful, man, you know, on who you deal with. And to say the least So anyway I'm going to play this video It's about four and a half minutes long And um, we'll get the precepts So here we go Section 1022 Subsection C allows detention under the law of war without trial until the end of hostilities authorized by the authorization for use of military force. So you can be held forever without receiving a trial um, until they determine that the hostilities are over. The National Emergency Centers Act, or HR 645, mandates the establishment of national emergency centers to be located on military installations for the purpose of providing temporary housing, medical, and humanitarian assistance to individuals and families dislocated due to emergency or major disaster, according to the bill. 
right? And what's a major disaster? A major disaster could be from inclement weather to earthquakes to uh, civil war, civil unrest, which the current thing now is civil unrest, okay? The world was on edge now, or mainly uh, of the citizens of America is on edge because they're completely divided over this election. You heard what he said, they can hold you indefinite, meaning that you don't have an outdate. I remember, you know, in, in the vision I had, the dream, rather, um, I was talking to Jake up in there, and I'm like, shit. He like, you know where you at? I'm like, yeah, I perceive to be in a concentration camp. And he said, that's absolutely right. And then, you know, I was talking to him, and he basically told me, he said, nigga, you don't, you don't get out of here. He said, only how you get out of here is if you die. <laughs> or it's some type of miracle or some type of intervene, interferes with, with whatever you got going on. But basically, you're going to be sent in the FEMA camps. And they're going to put you to death in hell. They're going to work you to death or they'll lock your ass up into you right away. And that's the purpose of it. And that's the plan they want to put you, Jason. Okay, re look up the uh, the Rex 84 plan. And I still yet to be held what this Project 2025 is all about. Um, of course, they're going to mention some type of political shit in the mainstream media. But social media, I have to look up what Project 2025 is all about to see what that's really talking about to read in between the lines because all these projects like project megiddo and rex 84 i believe they merge that into one particular uh clause and that's ultimately rising up against people of color in case they decide to uh overthrow a government so they set up you know players like the black panthers and the guerrilla movement and even some of these uh black militia movements and you got some israelite camps out there that come in the same sentiment of these black militia groups so a lot of these guys have been infiltrated man all right and they're going to use a lot of these groups to bring about some type of chaos to be justified on locking up the true followers of Yahweh by Shimi Shai, which includes us. So it's getting ready to really, it's going to be very, very uh, pretentious here, contentious to say the least. All right. Uh, the legislation also states that camps will be used to provide centralized locations to improve the coordination of preparedness, response, and recovery efforts of the government, private, and nonprofit entities, and faith-based organizations. Okay, so the camps are going to be used for, you know, all of these things plus faith-based organizations, your 501c3 corporate religious entities of the state, of, of, the, of the U.S. government. The bill also provides that camps can be used to meet other appropriate needs as determined by the Secretary of Homeland Security. What, like slaughterhouses or, you know, guillotine factory? I mean, look, look. And that's the spirit he said, at a slaughterhouse, because in my vision, it was like a slaughterhouse, okay? But it was different parts to it. When I first came in there, it was like a meat, like a butcher shop or some shit, you know, where they slaughter animals at. And then, you know, they got the sharp tools. I seen like these giant like axes or whatever they may have been hanging from the ceiling and i perceived them to be like guillotines and then as i was getting a tour of the place it looked like a regular work camp but it was dark and kind of it was dim in there it was real dark and it was dirty of course it wasn't up to cold and jake was like working like slaves in this joint man and you heard what he just said okay so that wasn't too far off you know from what we envisioned Okay, and the Lord, he does give his men vision because it was so funny. It's a little fun, a little irony here, man. Um, I was in the uh, group chat and the elder brother Barack posted a clip of this movie that I've seen when I was a kid. It was called The Witches. Now, he posted this like around 11 o'clock this morning and I woke up roughly around 7 o'clock, 7.30. Um, and the funny part about it is I actually had a dream about a clip of that movie of those same actors and actresses in that movie seven this morning and then all of a sudden the elder brother barack posted it in the group chat which is kind of weird i'm like i was just, i was just thinking of this and then it happened so somehow some way the spirit just be moving like that so when we have visions man hey tap into that man okay we ain't just blowing smoke up your ass and trying to sound cute and like we just these erratic men of the lord no man does most high he deals with us man okay more than what we even know or what we believe Okay, but he mentioned Slaughterhouse because, like I said, they want to make a complete... Ex they couldn't kill us anyway. They couldn't kill us politically. They couldn't kill us with the poisons and the food, with the Momo agenda, with the LGBTQRZABC. You know, they couldn't do it with the... Because, uh, you know, this current administration, the whole idea is to do away with Israelites, okay? And this is why they have that reproductive rights shit going on, you know? To fully do away with the Israelite men because if you castrate the men 
mentally and then physically he's shooting blanks. He's not a man. Okay, then you got another two thirds of our men that act like women. Okay, that don't even you know, and then the other half is a bunch of men or men, and then on top of that, you have one eight seven babies. So they're trying to do away with us, and none of those things have really worked for the most part. So you know what, Esau got to go gung ho. Okay, he got to be the one and bring out the story. He's like, you know what, man, we got to do a traditional execution style. We got to go door to door. We got to round these people up, and we got to kill as many of them as we can. And that's ultimately what's going to happen. And if proof of that, watch the movie called The First Purge. So let me get a preset real quick and uh, let me play the rest of these videos and we'll get to it. So this is the book of Revelation 12 and 12. And it says, therefore, rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. All right. It says, woe unto the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil was come down to you having great wrath because he knoweth he had but a short time. And like we say under this guy's administration, Trump. He's just going to continue what he started during his first administration, man, through his first, his first term. Okay, he's just going to go and he's going to add more. He's just going to do what the elites tell him to do. Okay, so 2025, man, hey, like Apostle Tara said, the hopeful year of Jacob's trouble. I believe all the stages have been set up for that already, going back into the Obama administration. The international martial law with the giving the cops full immunity and then Trump, he's coming to give the military or the cops full immunity to do what they want to do so stopping frisks harassment you know bullying tactics gestapo type shit and they gonna target you jakes because guess what when they do this mass deportation a lot of the migrants are living among your jake communities and that was you think that was done uh like by accident hell no that was done by design because they know that y'all the same people so they like look this kill two birds and one stone you know, and on top of that, they're gonna have to reinstate a draft because the military, they didn't, they they didn't re meet their recruitment numbers. So we end up times, man. All right, but it says here, the devil has come down. You having great wrath because he you know that you have but a short time. So, hey, you Jake's out there, man. Hey, we warned you, we told you. Now the Lord is getting ready to move on you, and He's gonna use this devil to do it. The Lord's will. What, what do we realize that camps can be used to meet other appropriate needs as determined by the Secretary of Homeland Security? What, like slaughterhouses or, you know, guillotine factor? I mean, what, what do we talk about? What are these other appropriate needs? This is a carte blanche mandate that many fear could mean the forced detention of American citizens in the event of widespread rioting following a national emergency or total economic collapse. So the conclusion, what pastor could in good conscience participate in this heinous program? Well, I guess a hundred thousand. That's a, that's supposedly the high end estimate. Only a pastor who has turned their back on Jesus could ever be part of such a charity. But I would venture to say, if you interviewed the vast majority of these hundred thousand, they think they're they're doing pretty good. With God, they think they've done nothing wrong. They they're they're obeying Romans thirteen, and they've thrown. Yeah, because your leaders have sold you out, man. Okay, we don't have leaders. This is why when you look into the the Negroid race is why they got you, give you entertainers because like, what was Kamala supposed to do? Who was gonna come out and advocate for you, Jake? Okay, they didn't have any particular leaders or speakers. They all dead. Malcolm X, Martin Luther King, you know, uh, what's this guy's name? Uh, Charles Drew, he's been gone a long time. Frederick Douglass, you got this guy, Marcus Garvey. You know, all these men that were so-called your leaders, you ain't got no leaders. You have nothing but entertainers and sports figures. Those are your leaders. Esau, they duped him by giving him crooked politicians and shit. You know, you had Mayor Daley, you had, uh, what's this guy's name? Uh, what's this guy's name in California? Gavin Newsom. You know, they give you politicians to appease to Esau. See, Esau has politicians, you niggas have entertainers. Okay, you have no leaders and you have church leaders, that's it. Okay, Jesse Jackass Jackson, Al Charlatan, okay, that alligator looking nigga. Th that's who you have, you have no leaders. Okay, so I mean, what was Kamala going to do? Put a rabbit out of a hat? Yeah, she had to give you Cardi B because that's all you stupid niggas advocate for anyway is a bunch of wickedness, a bunch of foolishness. So, I mean, they did what they they, they did what they tried to do to get you. Okay, they, they can't give you a Malcolm X, okay? Because <laughs> you ain't had no real leaders, which he was not a, a real leader. Okay, even though he was set up and bought and paid for, but he came around to the truth. But you see what happened to him. They put his ass down because ultimately he wasn't operating in the spirit of the most high. Okay, what was his name? Malcolm Little. You know, uh, Detroit Red, a nigga from Detroit, little grimy Jake, you know, got locked up and found the nation, right? But anyway, uh, 
Keep going. I'm loud and all they care about is what the government thinks. And that means that they're of God. They're a man of God. Mm-hmm. Only, uh... Yeah, watch out for these crooked Israelite leaders. Watch out for that dude, Nate Daniel, or Nate. Watch out for Alizar. Definitely watch out for that nigga, Hakar. All right, watch out for, uh, what's this guy's name? They used to call him the bubble eye, the, the bubble eye nigga. What's his name? Rakar Shiar from the GOCC. Watch all these other camps, man, that operate in this 501c3. But definitely keep your eyes open for that nigga Nate, man, all right? Because Nate is juiced in, all right? When you see the IUIC, you stir clear of them, all right? Don't even engage with them dudes because they ain't right. And I'm not saying everybody in their congregation is wicked, but for the most part, their congregation is blinded by the leadership. You know, same thing with these other groups, man. Their leadership is causing them to be blinded. Okay, so watch out for these church leaders, man. These these maker, like, what's this guy's name? T.D. Jakes, Power Bottom. Uh, what's the other guy? Eddie Longstroke. He's dead now, you know. Eddie Longstroke, he was groping them little boys. And um, several more, Joe Osteen, all these guys, man, just to name a few. Reverend Otis Moss the third. I don't even know if he's still even preaching, but still, you know, guys at these big mega churches that got these big breaks with the government, you got to watch out for them because these leaders have been handpicked to deceive our people. All right. As a matter of fact, let me get this real quick. Let's get this in the book of Jeremiah. False shepherds, man. All right. Jeremiah 23 and 1. It says here, Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pastor, says Yahweh. Okay. It's talking about you church leaders, man. Really starting with you Israelites. Because it says here, therefore, thus says the Lord Yahweh of Israel against the pastors that feed my people. He have scattered my flock and have driven them away and have not visited them. Right. Because they're not in it for Jake's best interests. OK, their job is to deceive the flock and to have them to go astray. So when the Lord judges them, he can get them all in one swoop. OK, and it ain't the Lord's fault. You're ignorant. It just you just wasn't of the elect if you don't come up out of that joint. And it says and driven them away and have not visited them. So behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doing, says the Lord. And I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the countries which I have driven them, which is the elect, and will bring them again to their folds, and they shall be fruitful and increase. And I will set up shepherds over them, which shall feed them, and they shall fear no more, nor be dismayed. Neither shall they be lacking, says the Lord. All right. And that's the point. We got righteous teachers out here, but men don't regard that. OK, because they call us a bunch of bums. A bunch of pedo, you know, they say all manners of evil against us when we just go out there and we give the word the way it is. The problem is people don't like the fact that we're so straightforward and we're so rough. You know, some of us at least. And the message is straightforward without any gimmick. So that doesn't appear uh, to the world of the falsehood, you know. So. Uh, just to put that out there. But yep, the time of Jacob's trouble was nigh. In my opinion, I think we are already in it, you know, but it just had to play out. But ultimately, it starts officially when the society collapsed and when they declare war on the tribes. And that's a known fact. And that's when we can officially say that we're in the time of Jacob's trouble because we've been in trouble since we got off the damn ships. But Jacob's trouble is actually a for, for future prophecy, which the Christians call the Great Tribulation, which we're quickly approaching okay to say that um so the pastors in america are being coerced to participate in this because in part when an emergency is declared no pastor who does not have the fema trained government badge um will be allowed to be in the declared emergency area pastor mansfield and many other pastors that i spoke with felt strongly that this was the government's way of removing jesus from america's landscape and setting the stage for the ushering in of the new age one world religion absolutely it's that big of a deal most likely this will be the linchpin it is mind-boggling to fathom how so many reporters and media types deny the existence of fema camps under these circumstances it is also disturbing that any pastor would agree to participate in a program in which Jesus and the Bible end up on the cutting room floor. The only viable way to preserve Christianity is for all Christians to leave their churches and form Bible home study groups. Okay, that's that's his opinion. Okay, um, you know, obviously if their church is a 501c3, if it's not yoked up with the government, I mean, that wouldn't be the case. But, you know, I think that hopefully there are... 501c3 pastors out there that are going to get their eyes open, that, that, that try to get out of the system, and I'm going to give you some resources on how to do that here coming up shortly. Um, this 
goes on by saying, since I began investigating how wide, and this is Dave Hodges, this report is from him, since I began investigating how widespread the takeover of the church is by DHS and FEMA, I have been contemplating the potential wisdom of Alexander Schultzenitsyn, who made the following quote, quote, where he said, quote, we should have resisted the KGB at the front door. If the KGB thought that they might go home, not go home that night, the Russian people might have had a different fate. And that's and as a result of what the Russian people let happen to them, you know, Stalin killed, I think, conservatively, 50 million. I mean, of his own people. All right, so that's the first video. He was going into the concentration camps. All right, now this is that, this demon, uh, Tom Homan, the borders are, he hates, he hates the door of the kingdom, man. So let's listen to this video. And like I said, it's a couple more precepts I wanted to give, but I mainly wanted to show the videos in this video, but let's go. And also it says, Eve is scared that Trump is president, <laughs> black woman, right? She's through. Now you can forget about her. I may just play that one too, just for shits and giggles. But anyway, here we go. And by the way, this guy, Tom Homan is a complete devil. <laughs> Just listen to what this nigga said. President-elect Trump says Tom Homan, his former director of immigration enforcement, will serve as the White House border czar. Trump made the announcement on his Truth Social site last night. The role does not require Senate confirmation. Homan will be asked to carry out Trump's pledge to launch the largest deportation operation in the country's history. Trump says Homan will be in charge of all deportation of undocumented immigrants back to their country of origin, in addition to overseeing the northern and southern borders and maritime and aviation security. I got a message. As a guy who spent 34 years deporting illegal aliens, I got a message to the millions of illegal aliens. The nigga said that shit proudly too, man, all right? Matter of fact, uh, let's look this up real quick. It's in the book of Daniel. Stout. I think that's in Daniel 7. No. Uh. Hold on. Come on, man. What the fuck? Uh, where are we at? Yup. I just typed that in. It's funny. It didn't even, it didn't even, it didn't even come up. But anyway, yep. This is the book of uh, Daniel 7. And I'm going to start at verses 19. And it says, Then I would know the truth of the fourth beast, which is this current Roman Empire, right? It says, which was diverse from all the others because they have a Senate, they have state, and also you have what they call a, a United Nations. Okay, they heaped into them all nations. It says, was exceedingly dreadful, whose teeth were of iron, which is the military, and his nails of brass, which devoured and break in pieces and stamped the residue with his feet. Because we know that through wars and global wars, this current administrator or this current uh, regime or this current empire, this Roman Empire has put to, to flight all these other nations, these kings, and they've taken over the world for the most part. But it says here in the Ten Horns, that which in his head, which you got the NATO and the EU, right? And of the other which came up before whom three fell, even of that horn had eyes and the mouth that spake very things whose look was more stout than his fellows, man. All right. And I beheld the same horn made war with the saints. Okay. Now this is talking about this system here, this Roman empire, this current system. Okay. The America. And it says here, and prevailed against them until the ancient of days came and judgment was given to the saints of the Most High, and the time came that the saints possessed the kingdom. So we're at the bitter end. But it says his look was more stout than his fellows, and Trump is a proud devil to say the least, man. Okay, he's the type of nigga that shits and don't wash his hands. Okay, you go to the bathroom out there, and you you know how like when you go to like the restaurants and you got to kind of glove up to open the door because you know Esau he's nasty. I've, I've witnessed it. I've seen Edomites come out of the, the bathroom stalls and they don't even wash their damn hands. You know, and they'll touch the damn handle and then you got to go behind this nigga. So you got to find a piece of paper or use your shirt to open up the damn door. Or sometimes they got the foot stump at the bottom and you pull it with your feet. You know, <laughs> I've seen it. And hopefully they got the one that you could put your elbow in and you can slide it back and open it up. 
But that's the type of devil he is. He'll wipe his ass and don't even wash his hands. He's very, very, uh, a very grotesque man. All you devils are, are really filthy. Okay, but it says here that same horn made war with the saints and prevailed against them. Okay, look at our current condition. You see? So, hey, he had the right people in his cabinet this time. And, hey, to say the least, hey, he's, they're ready to roll up on you on you tribes, man. They're about tired of playing games with you. And this is really, like I said, the judgment of the Heavenly Father, man. Why Jake's is playing around and bickering over who won the selection and why this and why that. And we need more benefits and all this other shit, man. Look, they're getting ready to take it all from you niggas, man. All right? So, y'all just better embrace Aliens that Joe Biden's releasing our country in violation of federal law, you better start packing now. You're damn right. Because you're going home. And I got another message. Another message to the criminal cartels in Mexico. You smuggle enough fentanyl across this country to kill 148,000 young Americans. You have killed more Americans than every terrorist organization in the world combined. And that's when President Trump gets back in office. He's going to designate you a terrorist organization. And he's going to wipe you off the face of the earth. You're done. You're done. <laughs> Niggas the devil, man. They gave me five minutes to say a few things. So if I offend anybody tonight, I don't give a shit. How many pounds of fentanyl didn't make in this country to kill Americans? How many known suspected terrorists didn't make in the country? How many billions of dollars did the cartels make? President Trump is one badass president. He secured the border at the level we've never seen before. And I got a message to the millions of illegal aliens that's been released into the United States under this administration. Don't get too comfortable. We're going to need some help. Do I have any volunteers that want to come back and help run the biggest deportation operation in the history of this nation? You see what I'm saying? So he's getting them proud boys riled up, man. I mean, bro, we already said Trump is set up to bring division, man. Okay, Trump has single-handedly divided an entire nation based on views and policies. And when you look at him in hindsight, he's speaking okay things. He's saying the right shit, but what is his true ultimate agenda? You know what I'm saying? And Salak, your brother, for the noise in the background, I'm actually cooking some. I'm actually working from the crib half the day. So, you know, call all you have about your shot for that. But, um, <clears throat> get that off. Anyway, but yeah, th th this is the, <laughs> you heard what he said. He's rousing up the Patriots, man. Because like I've mentioned in the previous videos of four time, hey, they going to rouse these, these regular citizens up and they going to start hunting you jakes, man. And when Esau sees Brown, he don't discriminate. Brown, black, it's all the same thing to him. Okay, if you don't speak proper English according to his etiquette, then he has an issue with you. So you black, Hispanics, and Native Americans, basically, they just declare war on the people, all right? And we know that a lot of the migrants are actually Israelites. Some of them come up here to live a reputable life, and then some of them are actually military-age men, too. And the ones that's the military, they're not talking about them, because believe it or not, you're actually going to have them that's assisting this regime on getting your ass up out of here. So this is an indirect way of declaring war on you Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. All right. So uh, let me play the rest of this and uh, we'll get a couple more precepts and that'll be that. In January of 25, the greatest president of my lifetime walking back in the White House. He tells me, we got, you know, I say 120 days. He says, no, you got 60 to lock the border down. Well, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what I told the president. He comes back, I come back, we fix this shit. <laughs> He's a real demon, man. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, brothers. Uh, let's go from here. And it says here, and, and thus, the fourth beast should be the fourth kingdom upon the earth, which is this current system, this Roman Empire, right? The revival of the Roman Empire. And it reads, it says, which should be diverse from all kingdoms. Why? Because the military, all right, uh, the Senate, you know, you have what they call a bipartisan system. You have uh, Democrats, Republicans, and going back to the Roman Empire, you had the plebeians and the patricians. But it says, and shall devour the whole earth and should tread it down and break it in pieces, man. And this is the whole concept of the new world order. They want to get everybody under one rule. All right. This is why majority of all these countries have a central bank. 
in their country because the U.S. military they shows up with 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 that dollar in hand. And look, this is what it is. You accept the dollar, we're just gonna eliminate you. All right. So it says here, and the fourth beast should be the fourth kingdom upon the earth, which should be diverse from all kingdoms and should devour the whole earth and should tread it down and break it into pieces, man. All right. So this is the last kingdom of the heathen rule before Yahweh Shai comes to rule on the planet earth, man. So while you Jake's out there steady believing in uh, this, this American system, this world, hey, man, y'all niggas better repent and get right because this is it. All right. I feel through the spirit. Something big is getting ready to go down upon this man getting in office. All right. Like I say, wait and see. But hey, just what the spirit tells me. And usually, you know, when I'm in the spirit, it be on point a lot of the times than not, you know, and brothers have been uttering the same sentiment. But like we say, it's all up to you. How about you? How shy at the end of the day to put the final stamp of approval on what we say. But regardless on when it happens, it ain't a matter of, of if it's when it happens. So if it don't happen within his administration, oh, I thought you said it was going to happen. Look, that's not the point. The point is, it's still going to happen. No matter who does it, okay? No matter what devil is in office, because Trump is just a puppet at the end of the day, okay? So they got fucking kingdom come to be the president of the United States and over Babylon. Guess what? He's got to follow the instructions of the elite bankers, because this is really a, a elite. This is the, this is this is the 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 elite behind this this ordeal. All right, Jeremiah thirty and four. It says here, from thus says the Lord, we have heard a voice of trembling, of fear, not of peace. But ask ye now and see whether doth a man doth travail with child. Because he's saying, when do men have kids? Unlikely, right? Wherefore do I see every man with his hand on his loins as a woman in travail and all faces turned into paleness. Because of the affliction, the hell that's coming, the fear, the dread. Okay, it's going to be like some, some, some fucking 1984 on steroids, man. And it says here, alas, for that day is great so that none is like it, but it is even a time of Jacob's trouble, but he should be saved out of it. The elect will be saved from the coming hell. All right. So I'm going to play this last video, get a couple more precepts and we'll end it. And I'm going to play this E video at the last just for shits and giggles. But here we go. Another FEMA camp video. Michigan. Listen to this, ladies and gentlemen. FEMA's big move to tiny Michigan town has residents on edge. Rightfully so. In an unexpected turn of events, FEMA has rolled into a small rural town in Michigan with a staggering convoy of 350 different vehicles, semi-trucks, trailers, setting up a large-scale base in an area with fewer than a thousand residents. This once quiet town is now bustling with activity as FEMA trucks, semi-trailers filled with equipment and a large number of emergency support personnel establish a major operation hub at the town's small regional airport. The next would be uh, the, report, the airport report. Uh, that would be me. Uh, the airport was just notified that FEMA has chosen the airport facility as a stationing uh, hub for uh, emergency services through FEMA. Uh, they will be serving six counties in this area, and they will be bringing in some 350 semi-trailers with equipment to park on the base. So if you see a lot of trucks coming into the into the base, that's what it is. It's nothing, nothing to get scared about. They're staging for uh, emergency situations in any of these six counties that FEMA um, takes care of. There's not much change other than our projects are moving along. Uh, next, th next would be uh, the, report, the airport report. Uh, that would be me. Uh, the airport was just notified that FEMA has chosen the airport facility as a stationing uh, hub for uh, emergency services through FEMA. Uh, they will be serving six counties in this area, 
and they will be bringing in some 350 semi-trailers with equipment to park on the base. So if you see a lot of trucks coming into the into the base, that's what it is. It's nothing nothing to get scared about there. Staging for uh, emergency situations in any of these six counties that FEMA uh, takes care of. And Mr. Freeman is in the house. Yeah, <laughs> perfect. said they about had it with you jakes man they ready to put you back in slavery and ultimately put you to death and that's gonna come back all right second address 16 and 68 for behold a burning wrath of the great multitude is kindled over you and it should take away certain of you and feed you being idle with things offered into idols okay and that's gonna be in them concentration camps which we just showed two videos on these fema camps and you can say oh that's conspiracy theory look man you don't have to believe nothing we say all right just take heed when your ass end up in one of them detention centers and then that's what it is because remember the scriptures say that some should be to the captivity to the captivity some to the sword to the sword and some to the famine to the famine some to the dogs to tear so regardless all right all hell is getting ready to break loose and it says here and they that consented to them should be had in derision and reproach and trodden on the foot so consented to what the motb and to their force you know what uh, uh, and obviously opting into this new world order, all right. And for that, should be in every place and in the next cities a great insurrection upon those that fear the Lord. So basically, they're declaring war on you tribes, man. And it says, and they should be like madmen, sparing none, but still spoiling and destroying those that fear the Lord. For they should waste and take away their goods and cast them out of their houses. Then shall they be known who are my chosen, and they should be tried as gold in the fire, you know. So, yeah, man, you know, you Jakes. Out there, just be prepared. That's all I can say. And you brothers in the faith, man, gird up, lock in, stay prayed up. Because, like I say, man, we're going to need the uh, mercies of Yahweh, Bashim Yahweh Shai, when it's all said and done. Um, And we ain't going to cry for you niggas either. Just to be quite frank, I'm not, look, you Jake's, you on your own. Okay, you didn't take heed. All right. Uh, bu -bu -bu, what is this? The book of Revelation. No, not Revelation. What is this? Jeremiah 16 and 4. It says they should die of grievous deaths and they should not be lamented. Neither should they be buried because you die in them concentration camps. They may just throw your body in an incinerator and burn you up and just throw your ass outside. Like, remember, they had those uh, FEMA coffins by the thousands. You know, people was taking videos. This was back in 2012. When they said that them, poly, them coffins was able to fit like two adults and a small child or something like that, or two adults. But regardless of it, man, nobody's going to lament for you. And it says, and they should be consumed by the sword and by famine, and their carcass should be meat for the fowls of heaven and the beasts of the earth, man. All right. So anyway, uh, with that, all praises and glory and honor is due to you. about you? How shy? Lord, will you edify to the next lesson? Shalom. Out of everything that's going to come with the Trump administration, what scares me the most, me personally, is the fact that so many unruly boys and men have been given permission to rage out. Trump has incited violence. Nothing happened. Been charged with SA. Nothing happened. Got arrested for lying and cheating and stealing. Paid a couple dollars, if that and nothing happened. The way he talks 
and, and belittles women, nothing happened. The way that he speaks of his enemy and, and, and promises to seek revenge, nothing happens. So now that the leader of the free world is shown you could be all of those things and still be rewarded, and you want to talk about a crash out? Imagine being told you can't live here, you can't work here, you can't go here because you have a felony, yet the President of the United States of America has 34. Can you imagine being the person to tell them? Can you imagine being the person that runs to them after they've been told? You think someone yelling from their mama's basement, your body, my choice, men won again is bad? Wait until these Capitol Raid guys have been released. Wait until that man at the job feels like he has not been heard. Wait until that man's team loses. Wait until you cut that guy off on the road. And I wanted to add this before I post. Your daughters are going to be in trouble as well. Remember, they're looking at Trump and being told that this is a real man. And they're going to choose a boyfriend or husband that treats women like that. Remember, your young, developing daughter is going to go to junior high school, high school, and college with a whole bunch of boys that have been taught grabbing them by the cootie cat is okay. It's just a phase in life that young boys go through. And also, your daughter is going to run across one of these guys and she's going to reject him. And Trump has set the tone on how men are supposed to handle rejection and embarrassment. And that's with shame, rage, and violence. Cut your nose to spite your face. He was through.